Hello fellow planters. So I'm going to show you guys in this video a really simple way to propagate sundews. Now about four years ago I set up this terrarium and I have a mixture of sand and peat moss in here and these sundews have been happy. They haven't flowered while in here and right now I have them against a west facing window or near a west facing window and at one point I took so many cuttings and you can see all the little babies over there. Aren't they adorable? But I'm going to show you how you can take a few sundews and get tons of little plantlets. Now what I'm going to do is actually use this as the propagation terrarium. Now what I noticed is that these terrariums where you have just a lid that sits on top, which isn't completely airtight, are really good for plants and the fact that it slowly dries over time so then you can just add water as needed but this way it doesn't maintain excessive humidity to where all the leaves are used to the high moisture and if you take them out and plant them elsewhere that they suffer so this way i can take these plant them somewhere else and they they'll be fine you know not like they were accustomed to high humidity and now i have to reacclimate them to the normal humidity. So that's one reason to use these containers with a lid. Now, if you put too much water and it gets really humid, yeah, you may want to acclimate them, but if it, you know, because it slowly dries over time, because there is a gap that air can, and moisture can freely leave, it, um, you know, helps um, you from having to deal with acclimation once they're established and if it gets dry enough in here. So I'm going to use this container, I just, um, you know what, I don't think I'm going to, well, I can always put a little distilled water and rinse it out, but I think I'm going to just leave it the way it is for now. But one thing I will do is, as you see in all these videos, these little tabs, here let me show you, basically self-adhesive craft foam, I use a hole punch and I punch through and then I peel it and then the sticky side will go on the edge. I'll grab another one as you can see and I grabbed about nine of these but I'm only going to use like eight so then I'm going to put this here. You can see that this only cost eight bucks plus um, you know I think it was on sale. I'm going to just make sure this is lined up and this was from Hobby Lobby. Oh you can't see it's a blurry. There you go. So, so anyway, the reason why I like to put these tabs is if you put the glass on a hard countertop, you know, over time it gets scratched or it can scratch the countertop. If water drips, it sits underneath there. This gives you a gap to allow it to dry better if you, there's water under there and you don't notice. So... So it's basically good to have it like give it padding to protect the countertop, but also to keep water from sitting under there if there is any, you know, that gets under there. But usually putting eight is easier than putting six because it's easier to approximate the, the distance between them. Although, not in that case, is it? There we go. And, you know, craft foam, a sheet of the self-adhesive is like a dollar. And you think of how many holes you can get out of that and so many paddings and they come in many different colors. So now that I have this done with the padding, I can use some trusty tongs remove this. This is what I had left of some peat moss in a bag that I bought a while back, like three, four years ago. So I'm about due to get more, but I put it in here to, for now and it's pretty moist, which is nice. And these clumps will are really good to actually grab it. And because I'm using this for propagation, not necessarily for display, I don't really need to worry about putting way too much peat moss in there because 
you know, you just wanted to establish or, or start growing, forming new platelets, and then you can easily take it out of here and transplant. But I do need a little more than that, don't I? What they need to do is make some of these that are a little fat on the edges that come with a little thing just for grabbing um, little bits of media. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take this and just poke at it and see if I can get that in there just right. Yeah, so I want to put just a little more. I want to make sure it's going to be nice and even. Most people, when they propagate sundews, they have them floating in water. I found that that causes them to easily like rot and you don't have as much good success, at least I haven't. So, you know, this way I've found to have much better success and even leaves that will die eventually up from the carcass, we'll see a new one. You know, the, those could be Phoenix propagatings. Anyway, so I think that should suffice. So let me get this out of the way and then you won't see my reflection and my phone in the glass anymore. Okay, so I have this and what I need to do next is I'm going to rinse this out because I'm going to use different tongs for the other one and in the process I'm, I'm cleaning or adding more water and you squirt the glass you know I have distilled water in this wash bottle because you know if you're um, new to sundews you don't put them in regular soil and you don't put them in fertilizer or tap water etc and it's, I have these uh, Corona is the brand but you have different ones these needle nose snips, they're just excellent. I bought a cheap one from the Dollar Tree, it kept falling apart. It still works, but I had to keep assembling the spring. I bought this one and I'm like, wow, it's even sharper. So now I can go to here and figure out which leaf I want to prune. But before I do, I want to point out a few things. You can see how over the time it's grown and getting taller and taller. If I'm not mistaken, this is either Drosera rotundifolia or Drosera capillaris. Um, you can see how um, you compare it to my thumb, even though my thumb's higher. It's, there, it's, it's a tiny plant, about as smaller than a quarter, or about as big as a quarter in diameter for these fully grown ones. So now the trick is finding some leaves, and I like to find the ones that are closer to the bottom, and you just snip it. And each leaf actually will produce one plant only. That's the interesting thing about sundew. You know, you see butterworts and other plants where you, you can get multiple leaves, but not sundews. Now, I want to make sure I have the top. Now, it's really sticky, but what you need to do is make sure you have the top on sitting on top. So if I can grab it by the hairs. Oh, yes, score. And then I can set it there and just pat it down. You know, I should have patted the, the uh, peat moss just so it... Um, well, I could do that easily with this, you know. Just make it flat versus clumped. And this way it's easier to pat down. And, or it's easier to pat down the leaves, should I say. But this way... You, um, you don't have to worry about the leaf falling in and everything, but now I have this. So as you can see, I'm not really deliberately watering per se, but I'm just, to rinse off the tool, I'm doing it in here so it gets a little water and then I'll show you how much water to put after I've taken enough of these leaves. So then here I see another one that's down in there. I'm gonna grab that one. You can see all these dead leaves as it grows up. Got it. Okay, so now take these tweezers. Some these are kind of funny because they're sticky. It makes it a little tricky trying to grab them. There we go. 
and then I can set it, make sure that the top side is up. Okay, see these are toppling over. I wonder if it's just, if the roots are like, you know, dead and it's just growing off itself. Anyway, so, oops, I have a little bit of peat moss on top, but that's fine. I can always wash it with water or not worry about it. New plantlets will grow e either way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch more like that, and then we'll be back in a moment. I went ahead and, oops, I went ahead and put 20 leaf cuttings and I took the cuttings, all 20, from these three. This one I was able to push back down. This one can actually go back down. It seems like they are kind of loosed off the soil, but still surviving in the humidity of the terrarium. So anyway, so I put 20 in here. So you can see in such a small area, you can get 20, and if you sell them for $5 a piece, I have like $100 worth of Sundays here, assuming they all strike. And hopefully the strike rate is going to be really good, because the, the strike rate when you float them in water hasn't, you know, it's lousy in my opinion. I haven't had as much success as this method, as you can see right there. So you don't want this to be drowned in water, but you see as I soak it, it does flatten and you want to make sure that you have good contact of the leaves with the ground. Okay, so that's the most wet you want to get it. And this way it's constantly wet but it's still able to breathe. And this way there, you put it in a nice area that gets bright light. Not necessarily direct sunlight, especially in the summer where you might cook them, but summer which you can get some sunlight like an east or west facing window. Or in the winter time, the light wouldn't be as intense on a south-facing window, so it might do okay, especially if it doesn't get too hot. But the heat helps them grow faster. It's just you don't want them to be like 90 to 100 degrees and starting to fry, you know, in a sense. But there's a bonus. As I was cutting these, I noticed something really interesting. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that these have yet to flower since I stuck them in here. But if you notice, right over here, here and there, are a couple flower stalks. And even this one, right there, is a little flower stalk. It's probably a little tricky to see. And let's see. Possibly that, it's still too early to tell, but here I have one, two, three. These are clearly flower stalks, unless they're bladder wort sticking out trying to flower. So, but if you look at this one, it looks like it's coming straight from the sundew itself. So I'm excited that these are finally flowering and all these fresh younger cuttings that I've taken sometime last year cut and just threw in there and they grew are doing really well. So I can actually take the, whoops, I can actually take these, remove the dead leaves, plant them, and I have some uh, fresh uh, plants to sell if I want to sell them. But for the time being, I have these, and I'll basically put the lid on this, put it in a sunny location, and in a few weeks, I should have new plantlets arising. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I found it, I hope you found it or found or learned some new information from it. Happy planting and don't forget to subscribe.